What's going on everybody? Gunner here and we are finally back with the tutorial. Now that Die Like a Pro is over. Um, and I wanted to start off kind of this tutorial winter season, if you will, uh, with the mini death grip. Um, and if you if you watched Tyler like Pro, if you went through that series, you got to see the composite debugger brush, which is what this uh, fly is based off of. This is episode six, part two. Go check it out. There's a link in the description on how to make this. But this is a literally three-step fly: tail brush, brush head. Like that's it. One, two, three, done. Um, and it's a mini articulated version. This is basically my kind of uh, take on on Kelly's mini sex dungeon, right? And it's this like three and a half inch articulated bugger that's super light, super wispy. Uh, but like Kelly's with the deer hair head, this has the strong fuzzy fiber head. It has an accurate three dimensional profile, water push, hydraulic, uh, proportionate to the size. And I have a little swimming clip. Um, of this guy from this fall when I was getting this guy dialed in and you can watch that it doesn't have any audio in it So it's kind of like this weird pause for like I don't know 30 seconds where there's gonna be dead silence, but uh, Check it out and then as soon as we get back from that we're gonna run through this because this is super quick tie um, And then at the end of this I'm gonna justify <laughs> All the design stuff um, that I wanted to put in a mini articulated fly. So for uh, real quick for all those who don't uh, want to mess with this bugger brush or any of this fun stuff uh, you can basically just tie a woolly bugger um, but you can see uh, this is webby this is really thick I'm, I'm basically getting all of my bulk all of my shape and profile from that feather it's basically like a, a articulated feather game changer if you will is kind of the whole point um, so when you do that when you do that bugger if you just go with the woolly bugger option Go big, like use schlopping, use thick webby uh, fibers, because um, uh, that's kind of the whole point of the fly, at least my my version. Uh, there's no wing stacks, there's no, uh, that's on the bigger version, the, the actual death grip, this is the mini. No wing stacks, no veiling over the back, it's all just from the brush. Nice, big, webby, thick, marabou schlopping uh, with ice dub kind of integrated into it. So check out the swim video and then let's dive into this thing. Sweet. So I got this guy squared away in my HMH here. Uh, I'm coming in with a size 4. This is a size 4 A-Rex Trout Predator series hook. Um, and you can find a, a full length to all the materials uh, detailed out in the description. So just check back on that um, as soon as we get rolling into this fly. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a full plume for the tail, full plume of marabou. And so I want this uh, to be a really rough viscous surface. I spun my thread clockwise. I'm going to create a really uh, bulky kind of rough surface on top of this hook. When you spin a, a thread clockwise you get a nice round thread, right? It's going to have a lot of volume to it. And when you wrap volume on your hook you're creating ridges, right? And this is going to give something for my marabou to dig into. And I'm going to take this full plume going to cut a little bit of the back away and I just have the full fiber right here. I'm going to take this, boom, that's a little long. I like a hook shank, there's a hook shank. You can see I have a little bit sticking out from my fingers. A hook shank and about a half is all I want for that tail. I'm going to catch this with one ultra clean wrap, a ton of tension, wrap back, maybe four wraps. I'm right back at my, my barb. So I wrapped that, I caught that and then wrapped it back to the, the point where I didn't want to go past anymore. I'm going to come forward so this has maybe eight turns, slip underneath, stop a hook eye short uh, so we can get a nice clean catch off on our brush here, trap that down and wrap that back. Now I'm going to come in with two strands of micro, uh, no, uh, two strands of accent flash. This is Hedron's accent flash. This is Mirage Opal accent flash. Um, and something, you know, this is a really small fly. It's like three and a half inches and when I think about uh, small bait fish, whether it's sculpin or an actual bait fish or whatever. Um, I typically find the smaller, you know, the smaller they are, the more translucent they are, the more opaly they are, the more uh, wispy they are. And it's like, <clears throat> if I was tying, you know, like a triple sculpt daddy, I would put kind of olive flash on this, but in this smaller version, I like opal on just about all the tails. It seems uh, very natural in the water for this size of forage. 
to just have that opally transparent, uh, that bright flash in there. So that's just, I, you know, stuck it right on top, two strands on my side, two strands on your side, cut to the length of the tail. I'm gonna come in and this is my composite bugger brush. Sorry, that's out of focus. My composite uh, bugger brush. And all it is is it's two hackles welded together um, at uh, kind of multiple points here with UV resin and then you spin it up uh, in, a, in a dubbing brush wire. And the whole point is um, a lot of times if you build like a streamer bugger, a lot of times you have to tie in a wire, you have to make a dubbing loop, run the dubbing loop up, Tie in your hackle, wrap the hackle back, catch the hackle with the wire, wrap the wire back up, and it's just a lot of tying points and it's a lot of steps. Uh, basically, this is my ice stub body in a dubbing loop, my wire, and my hackles all in one system. Um, so that's that's kind of the whole uh, goal behind this. And there's a lot of different options out there. You could do like a complex twist and whatnot. And well, I had to come up with something fun for myself, so this is my composite bugger brush. And I just trapped that, and right here at the back, it's important to give that two or three solid turns just so you can kind of reef on that. I'm going to come up straight to the eye, and you'll see how simple this back hook is. Um, but I just want to mention this real quick. I taught a whole bunch of classes uh, this past week. I was really fortunate to be invited down to uh, DuPage Fly Shop and uh, a Drift uh, Fly Tying Club in Chicago. And then I went over to uh, Schultz Outfitters and did bar flies. And, and all my patterns, I use a lot of brushes. I love brushes. Um, <laughs> I see people struggle with this a lot. And so I just want to uh, kind of hopefully give you something to, to practice. But when I, you know, I, I try to teach brush work and I'm sitting here and I'm, you know, drag your fibers off to one side, you want to preen it back like a hackle. I find so many people just don't, they don't manhandle it, they don't palmer it with a ton of tension. They just kind of loosely wrap this around a hook as if it's going to do what you want it to do. You have to make this do what you want to do. Like, you'll see when I get to the hook I, how much pressure I put on this, but I don't tie on a pedestal vase anymore. Uh, pedestal vice vase. I don't tie on a pedestal vice anymore because I used to drag it around my tape. Like I would pick up my entire base because I pull on this wire so hard. So you just you have to manhandle this stuff. And I'm going to walk this around one clean catch at the back. Set my angle for an open spiral wrap. You can see my angle right there. And then I just you manhandle it. You get half a turn, walk it under. Manhandle it, half a turn, walk it under manhandle it half a turn is it's almost I mean it's it's you just gotta force it into doing what you want and then you get right to the hook eye clean a little thread path I know I'm sure everything's in the way of the lens right there I like to catch this twice and catch all my dubbing brushes twice solid tension preen that back to the hook eye and then before I cut that I'll hit that with a third wrap just so it's all locked in place. And that's it, that's your that's your back hook. Now when you cut this, I like to cut it with wire cutters. It's a, the size large dubbing brush wire is pretty brutal on your scissors. Um, these points right here, you will gouge yourself on these dubbing brush wire points. Take you know the back of your bodkin, uh, the flat size of your scissors, just anything, and smash those down into the hook. If you use your fingernail and you slip off your fingernail, uh, that'll, be extremely painful. Don't do that. <laughs> and then I'll just catch this with my thread, throw in a little three turn whip finish, and you're done. That's the back hook. And so you can see just how many steps we kind of reduced from, uh, you know, dubbing brush, or not dubbing brush, but dubbing loop and our wire and hackle and counter ribbing. It's just one, two, three, you know, done. That's, that's your woolly bugger uh, tail right there, and it's that hackle. Um, it has that bulk, it creates this beautiful silhouette, super wispy, has low water drag, so we have a nice uh, fast tail with no drag, a nice thick wire hook, and I'll get to that at the end. And that flash is already picked out and, and, and kind of through the fibers so that you have this really good uh, illusion of bulk because the flash is not just trapped in at the core, but it's all the way through, all the way through that hackle and the full length of the hackle. And something I should have mentioned, um, and the uh, actual dubbing brush tutorial for this. Um, I love doing these the mini the, the mini death grips with flashaboo dubbing. Um, and it's you know it's not really a different product from ice dub, but it's cut in smaller strands. It's cut in one inch increments and it really helps build the flash in the core and it doesn't get too long. Um, so you can play with that. If you use ice dub a lot of times you'll kind of come up with as it's more like a coffee sparkle minnow and you can control the flash content for how aggressive or 
uh, what conditions you're going to be facing on the water. But I really like the Flashaboo dubbing for, for working with this mini death grip size. So that's the back hook. I'm going to set that aside while that <coughs> Zappa Gap dries on that. Now the front hook is also a size 4, so we have paired size 4, but I changed the hook model. Uh, and this is a Nordic Salt, an A-Rex Hooks Nordic Salt Deep Streamer Hook. Um, and you can see, I was kind of trying to go with uh, the downturn eye from the Season Geezer. Uh, it's not quite as aggressive of a downturn eye, it doesn't really uh, cause the fly to wobble that much. Um, but it's just a lovely short, uh, fat wire, thick hook, um, extremely aggressive uh, and I've gouged my fingers out like a thousand times on this thing. So um, this is my front hook. I just I like the way the proportions worked out. And I'll talk about the thick wires at the end of this. I have thick wires on back and front hook for a very specific reason um, that I'd like to go over. So I'm not going to double my wire through this eye, and it's not a big tie-in point. So I'm going to spin this again, same way we did the tail. I want this thread to have a lot of volume, and I'm going to put a really nice thick down and back thread base of round thread so that's really 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 rough um, and and we're going to use that to gouge kind of the nylon of our stainless steel wire here I'm coming in with these are senyos uh, <laughs> uh, they're called senyodelic um, but they're senyos large bead chain eyes and it's just one on you know one on each side so two two beads or however you want to do it um, and I'll talk about these real quick. Hmm. Actually, that's a good pointer. We're going to tie the rest of the fly in white. Because I just broke my thread. Whoops, daisies. But, um, so these large bead chain eyes. I kind of fell in love with this, uh, these eyes this, this past fall. And the coolest thing about these eyes paired with this head is they're basically neutrally buoyant. I mean, they do not add a whole bunch of weight at all. Um, and so I can create this fly that, you know, it, it has enough, a little bit of head weight, enough wire thickness that it's, it's breaking, uh, you know, the surface of my, the, the, the film of my, of the, of the, of the water, uh, the surface film, and it's getting down and it's swimming immediately as soon as you smack it. Um, but as soon as you strip it and you jerk strip it, it has this pause. And so it's like, I can create this fly that is, is articulating. Uh, it has all this inline momentum from thick wire hooks, but it doesn't have any head weight. So it's not diving and it's not jigging uh, when I strip that. And I'm getting way ahead of myself because I really wanted to talk about this at the end. Um, but that's what happens when you haven't filmed a video in a month. You kind of just go off. So <laughs> I'll get to that later. Um, but again, I'm going to spin this thread, right? We're, we're focusing on the fly, on the tying for the moment. I got one, uh, one 3D bead for spacing. I got uh, basically 40 pound American fishing wire, nylon coated stainless steel. I like 49 strand. Again, I have a nice round thread. I'm going to wrap that back, put a boatload of pressure on this. And when I broke that thread at my uh, tying down my eyes, I tie it with that much thread tension basically at all the time. I tie within probably 5% of the breaking strength of my thread at any given time. I am not, <laughs> this is, you know, it's kind of like manhandling that dubbing brush and making it do what you want and working it around the hook. That's just how I tie at all times. It's always, it's always fast and hard and aggressive and you know, these are streamers and I don't want these suckers coming apart. This is not some light, delicate dry fly with a dot thread. You know, I got 140 Vivas power thread on this sucker and I'm lashing stuff down. Now when you, uh, you put super glue on this, I'm not really doing it to bind the wire uh, to the hook. I'm doing it to reinforce the thread wraps at the back. Um, and so this wire, a lot of times it'll, it'll eat through your thread. Like you can, you know, that's 40 pound wire. If you reef on that, it's not that it's going to slip and pull out, but it'll break this thread at the back because that's where all the, the tension is at the joint. It's all back here. You know, if you lift up on this, well, these three wraps at the back are what have to hold that in place. It's not that it's going to slip out, but it's going to eat through it. So when you super glue this, it's not so that you're binding it to the hook shank so that it can't ever slip. I am reinforcing these thread wraps, you know, these last 15 thread wraps at the back of this so that it's, it's fully enclosed and caged. Uh, it's just a durability thing so that that wire can't eat through those. 
as that's drying, I'm going to come in with the second half of my brush. So you can see I used the tail half on the back and the front half on the front. Um, and what you do, and I talk about this in the brush tutorial, is it builds a tapered fly, right? Um, and, and so the front is bigger, the tail is smaller, and it's just using the hackles as they are designed, you know, to build your bulk for you. It's super slick, super simple, super easy. Um, and what I like to do, you can get these uh, gator grips. This is from like one of the saltwater epoxy wheels, a drying wheel. Um, and that's what I use to grab my, my wire up here at the top. And again, I'm going to manhandle this. I'm going to put a whole bunch of tension on this. I'm pulling really hard. Get a clean wrap at the bottom. This hackle's webby enough that it's going to cover that, that gap for the most part. And we don't need a material cover right there open spiral wrap this up to the front and I, I kind of over over prep these brushes they're a little bit long which always is good I'd rather have it be long than short and then I'll try to get one nice full kind of wrap of the the marabou style feather right here at the head and that'll that'll finish that so that's our that's that's our fly right there uh, super super easy come in and clean this out make sure I got a thread path walk this around when you catch this like this has some serious tension on it before I ever let go of that dubbing brush come up lock that in place you know four forward four back lock it again four forward four back and now that can't ever back off you're good to go you can get a nice clean cut right here with your wire cutters and then again, take the back of a bodkin, the broad side of your scissors, basically anything but your fingernail, and smash those wire points down against your hook shank. And trap these down. And you, you want to trap them down with light thread pressure. They are super sharp. They'll cut thread like a hot knife going through butter, and they'll stick your fingers like you wouldn't believe. So that's our... That's our, our tail, our body, and our front body. Um, you can see, I don't, you know, if I wasn't talking like I always talk, it, <laughs> it's a super quick fly. Um, and then the beauty of this, you can see how much, just how much bulkier that front body is than that tail, right? And I didn't have to do anything, I just used the hackle. Hackles are tapered, I mean, they're, they're skinnier at the tip and wider at the base. You know, they build that, it's almost like a tree shape, they build that cone shape for you. And I'm just using that, uh, you know, the small in the back, the big on the front, you have this pre-tapered fly um, and I'm using all this feathers for bulk it's basically a feathered game changer um, but that has you know it's built on a wire platform for durability um, super easy so I'm gonna come in make a short dubbing loop I'm gonna walk you guys through uh, one of these strong fuzzy fiber heads a little bit more uh, slowly um, and obviously the hardest thing to convey is density so I'm kind of gonna fail at that but I'll, I'll try to enlighten you guys on some of the, the density aspects for how much fibers the quantity of fibers that you're looking for um, but I really just want to go over how to spin it up in a loop because people have a lot of uh, a hard time getting this locked in and combing it out and it's, it's really fairly easy and simple so I like to cut this off my hank you can see like I have this rope of strong fuzzy fiber you're looking for maybe you know, uh, this is, it's got tangled on me. You're looking for maybe like half a pinky width. If you put your pinky up here, I cut it straight off the top. And this is, I mean, this is how wide it was, right? It's like half a, you see my pinky, like a pinky width. You want it relatively sparse. I don't want to say, you know, the whole point for the head to push water and for it to be sculptable. So if you overdo it, that's fine. And you can always catch it off before you hit your hook eye. But, you know, the whole point is... You just gotta, for density, you just gotta do some trial and error. So what I like to do is I have that full hank. At that, it's at its full length, you know, it's like 10 inches long. I'll cut that in half, so now I have two five inch sections. Put those together, cut that in half, and so I have uh, one section. Uh, so it's one quarter the overall length of that, that strong fuzzy fiber. And it's all mashed together. If you grab this at the midpoint 50-50 and then take your scissors and cut this, you're gonna naturally cut it so that you have like a short section that's maybe 40% and a long section so that's 60%. And what you wanna do is you wanna, obviously that 60% is gonna go in first and that's gonna create your shoulders. And the shoulders are, are what's gonna push the water and create the hydraulic. And then this 40%, the short section, which is gonna be farthest away from the hook, is gonna create our head. And that's what we're gonna be able to sculpt around the eyes. I'm gonna push these guys into place. 
spread them out evenly so I can get a good uh, number of turns around these eyes. And you can just kind of see, uh, I need to back this guy out real quick. You can see that, that overall taper, right? We have these long 60% fibers bleeding up to these 40% fibers. These are your shoulders, your water push. These are your head, your trimming, uh, your sculptable fibers that are basically going to weave uh, the, the large bead chain eyes once we get up in, into the, the head of this fly. So what I like to do, you can see I'm the, pulling this towards myself. You can my, my dubbing loop is flat. It's parallel with the floor, and I have it tensioned. I'm pulling on it. If you just grab this up here and spin this real quick like you would ice dub, this strong fuzzy fiber will knot up on like crazy. And I'm not trying to build bulk on the core of my thread. The fibers will build the bulk. The fibers will fight each other and, and, and build uh, naturally, the same way you'd stack you know, deer hair or wool or whatever you want to do. But I want the core of this super tight because I want to be able to palmer it with touching turns and build this nice dense head that's extremely durable. So the way to, to kind of clean this so none of these get trapped around the core multiple times is you start spinning it while pulling it towards yourself. If you watch the dubbing brush tutorials, I have a little hex screw over here that I can lock in place and I start my brush with that locked in place because it adds tension to the system so that these fibers can't get in here and kink sideways and wrap around the core of that. Uh, the tension keeps the fibers vertical, not you know perpendicular, not vertical, but perpendicular to this, to this level uh, spinning loop and I'll just go nice and slow and this is a you know it's a very methodical uh, dubbing loop this is not about speed it's about uh, consistency clean out some of those hackles spin that up and you don't need a ton of turns and I'll, I'll try to go through this when I do this again because uh, I'm gonna add about you know five turns and add a little bit of tension once I pick this out but I spin it until these wraps closest to the hook uh, they stop responding and so this is, I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean here. Comb this out, if you, you need a comb, like this this is a lifesaver. You're getting a little, you know, a 99 cent comb at Walgreens will make or break your fly tying. It's super easy. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start spinning this again, and I want you guys to be able to see these fibers closest to the hook. And as I spin this, you can see Basically, the fibers up here are spinning twice as much as the fibers down here. Does that make sense? And so, like, the fibers closest to my hook are, are kind of at their maximum strain for how much bulk there is. And if you spin it past that, uh, you'll basically break your thread, at least with the 140 power thread. And for working with the strong fuzzy fiber, um, sorry if I didn't mention that, this is Hedron strong fuzzy fiber. You really want, you know, 140 power thread, 210 denier. Um, you want, you know, 100 strand GSPs. You want some serious thread that you can put some serious uh, pressure on to spin this up because it's a coarse synthetic. And I'm going to take some water. I always have a cup of water over here. And I'm going to soak the core of this. Uh, and it just it helps make the fiber super workable. And you can see how thin that is. It's, it's like the width of like three strands of thread. Like I have no fibers trapped on the core. They're all just, you know, they're they're c captured in that dumbing brush, but they're not, uh, they're not trapped. They're not, I don't know how else to explain it. They're not building bulk on my thread. That's not the point. Uh, the bulk is the fibers will fight each other, but this thread is super, super thin. So you want to comb it out till you have it nice and thin. And just like manhandling that dubbing brush, I'm going to manhandle the strong fuzzy fiber, pull it back every single time. I got three clean wraps. I'm going to go right up tight to my eyes. I like to go underneath if I can. Every dubbing loop is going to be slightly different. If you go over the top, it's not a big deal. And then I'm really looking for just two clean wraps right at the hook eye. And so because you go, you know, I went underneath, I'm going to get two and a half, which is absolutely perfect. Come right up here. Catch this off, and before I tie this off, I'm going to pull these in the opposite direction of each other. I'm pulling this towards the camera on my bob and towards myself, using the leverage of my hook to tighten that down super tight. Bring that up and build a nice little thread head up here before I cut that off. Ideally, my thread would be black, <laughs> uh, but that didn't happen. Catch that with a half hitch. Catch that with a whip finish. And you're all set. Now this head, you know, I was watching Kelly's mini dungeon video the other day. Uh, I think I need to 
refocus this real quick. That looks better. Um, so this head, it's, you know, the whole point of, of Kelly using deer hair is so that he can sculpt it. He wants something that he can kind of create that, that shape with, and he doesn't really want it for its buoyancy. Um, and the beautiful thing about this strung fuzzy fiber is obviously there's, you know, it's a synthetic. It has no natural buoyancy, um, but it's coarse enough, and we'll get to this again uh, at the end of this, but it's coarse enough that it really doesn't trap any water, and it doesn't absorb water, it doesn't hold any water. Um, and so... <laughs> You basically have this three-dimensional thing that is building bulk and it has this volume and I can sculpt it to whatever three-dimensional shape I want without any water weight, without, uh, it has really low drag, it has zero trapped air, it's just like, it's like the bee's knees. Um, when you cut underneath, I like to cut underneath flush, I'll go from, uh, basically you can see my scissor blade here, this is my hook eye to my hook point. And that's, that's basically the angle that I'll cut that entire bottom to. And I like to preen the stuff up. It's, it's a little tricky to get used to trimming it because uh, it wants to lay down on you a little bit. You can just uh, pull it up, catch the shape, and then cut it back down. you got to get used to, to working with it. But it's really friendly to trim. As opposed to deer hair, you make one mistake and the head's kind of ruined. Um, you can kind of pick this out like wool and, and move it around if you screw it up. So it's a little bit more forgiving and you'll see at the end of this and you should be able to see in that swimming clip just how bulky that head is in the water. A lot of water push. And that's it. You don't have to over pick it. You know, if this was not a YouTube video, I'd probably sit here for another five or ten minutes and, and screw with this. But... I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm just going to fast forward through this. <laughs> I have to. Cool. So what I'm going to do real quick, I like to tone up these heads. You come in with a, it's called a chart pack marker. And it's a waterproof marker. It's kind of used for fabrics and such. You can find them at your craft store, um, like Hobby Lobby or something like that. And I'll just run this marker through this head, kind of forwards, backwards, basically right on top. And then I'll take my fingers and just beat the crap out of this head. This is a crazy durable head. Uh, and I'll just rough it up and work that, that ink right into the top and, and bleed it into these fibers. And that way you have a nice toned head on top and bottom. And that is the mini death grip. Super simple bug, right? If I didn't talk your ear off... It's literally just tail brush, brush head. Um, and so it's like wicked simple. Um, doesn't take any time at all to tie. Gonna get this focused right on the vise here. Um, and so what you can see, there's there's a whole purpose behind these these large hooks. There's a whole they're not large. They're both size four, right? This is a mini articulated fly, uh, but there's a purpose that they're both thick wire hooks. Um, the Arex Trout Predator series and the Arex Nordic Salt Deep uh, series are are thick wire hooks. Um, and so I'll go over that real quick after I hit this eye with glue, and then I want to go over these bead chain eyes because I think they're the bomb. So when you when you think about hooks. So many people, um, I don't know, it's like, you know, a lot of people think about keeling. Um, a lot of people are worried about the shank length. A lot of people are worried about the gap. A lot of, a lot of times you'll match the gap to, uh, you know, the, the species or the size fish you're fishing for, like how many trout flies are size four and size six, right? A boatload. <laughs> um, but very rarely do I think, and people consider wire thickness based on hook penetration, right? If you want penetration, you go with a thinner wire hook. You, if you want, uh, you know, more durability or the less likelihood of a hook straightening out, you go with a thicker wire hook. But not very many people, I don't think, consider momentum in your hooks. And this platform, this entire platform of super sparse tail, sparse brush, sparse brush. I mean, there's no water drag on this fly except on the head. Um, and I have two thick wire hooks, even though they're size four, they're thick wire hooks. And the whole point is that I want that fly when you strip it, I want that fly uh, to basically be able to deaccelerate over a window. I don't want it to stop on a dime. I want it to deaccelerate over maybe an inch, even two inches, three inches, whatever it is. I just want it to push past my leader. And there's a reason for it. And you can see how this fly behaves in that swimming video. Um, 
it leads, it, it very much so leads head first. And all that is, is momentum. It's like when you pull a line and you pull a fly through the water, it's attached to your line, it's gonna go whatever path your line goes. But as soon as you stop that on a jerk strip, right, you stop that system, if my fly can push past my leader, it can now move left and right with the slack generated from the momentum, right? It's like jerk fly principles. And when I fly with more momentum than water drag so it can deflect off to the side, same thing with articulating flies. You can do that with an articulating fly. Most flies do it, though, with lead eyes. And the problem is, is when you do that with lead eyes and that fly pushes past your leader, it'll start to descend in the water column. I wanted a fly that's going to suspend, completely level, neutrally buoyant, which is why it has large bead chain eyes, and I distributed the mass on my hooks throughout the system. So that's why this fly has big, thick wire hooks. It's because I want it to push past my leader and it creates this little bit of slack and because it has a really bulky head, this is like a high profile head. It's like a gust of wind hitting a semi truck or hitting a guy towing a trailer. You see the whole trailer get sucked off, right? This head is extremely high profile, tall, three dimensionally sound. It's not limp material. The head doesn't move. The head isn't breathing. It's not supposed to. The head is solid. It's dimensional. It's shaped. It's sculptable. It's pushing water and when uh, you know you have different current velocities in a river hitting this head it's going to deflect head first when you watch a fish swim they swim with their tail and they lead the head is, is the back of my hand sorry they're swimming with the tail they lead head first they scoot left and right head first and when this fly is swimming through the water and you're jerk stripping it and its momentum carries it even an inch into your leader system it allows it to deflect head first just the way a fish swims and it has this neutral pause to it because it doesn't have lead eyes but it has these these large bead chain eyes and the coolest thing to me about bead chain eyes over lead eyes aside from that uh, whole debacle that I was just talking about is these are the senyo eyes are really reflective they reflect light like this is it's metallic it's metal right which is lead it's dull and, and they're painted um, some of them have a glossy finish but they get you know they get roughed up as soon as you hit a rock um, but these these bead chain eyes reflect light and you can see them because they're bulbous uh, You can see them, you know from like behind the fly You can see that eye sticking out right there and you're behind the fly. So it's very three-dimensional uh, Which is really cool for fish and trout and everything else you have these these big kind of buggy eyes sticking out on the side of this fly Just like a sculpin or a goby or whatever and they're reflecting light um, But you have this neutrally buoyant platform so that the fly can articulate and hover lead head first It's still deaccelerating and the tail is still kicking you see it in the video the tail kicks like crazy even on a thick wire hook um, and and so it's still stopping but it's just deaccelerating over a longer window and now without the lead eyes it'll suspend so that's why this is designed the way it is um, you guys my camera said it's been too long <laughs> uh, this strong fuzzy fire like you know people I saw someone post a video the other day and he said, I want to see how it behaves. You have to understand, um, when I design a fly, I want the materials as they get forward to get stiffer. And the whole point is fish don't swim with their entire body like this. They swim with their tail. And it's like the last, I only want the last half to third of this fly to actually kick. I want the entire front half of this fly to be sculpted, to be round, to be dimensional, to be solid. It's not like a fish's belly is fluttering. A fish, fish's belly is solid. Their back is solid. Um, you might want to put, you know, peck fins on this because the fins might be moving. But the whole front of a fish is solid and only the tail is kicking. Um, so it's like when you move forward, I want this strong fuzzy fiber to be sculptable stiff. I want it to basically be deer here without buoyancy and that's what it is and that's why it's so cool and it doesn't hold any water. So be aware that when you try that, hopefully uh, you know adding tension to this when you spin it will help you uh, get that around the hook. When you work with these dubbing brushes, you just need to manhandle it you guys. And it's one of the coolest things about having a rotary vise is you know I will literally walk it a half a turn, flip it over. Walk it half a turn, flip it over. So I am in control of every single step. I'm not hand over hand. I'm not grabbing the wire multiple times and matting down material. I'm not, you know, I'm not able to back it off because I physically force it around, force it around, force it around. It's always under tension. I'm always pulling on it. Um, and that's that's how I do dubbing brushes. You just need to you need to manhandle them. So that's the mini death grip. Stay tuned next week, we'll hit the death grip up. It's basically the same fly, slightly bigger platform, added wing, uh, and some rubber legs. And this is something that I like. The smaller a fly gets for me, the less detail I put in it. 
Um, and this is this is my train of thought with that. Um, it's like, you know, this is a three inch fly. The pectoral fins, well, you still have the pectoral silhouette from the, the strung fuzzy fiber if you're doing a sculpin. But like a pectoral fin on a three inch fish is maybe like, what, a quarter of an inch? Like they're small, especially on a bait fish. A sculpin, you might get half an inch. Versus the pectoral fin on a six inch fish, well, now you're talking like an inch long fin, right? So the bigger a fish is, the more detail I put into if it has rubber legs and, and fins and if it's counter shaded, it's like a small little bugger pattern like this just tail, brush, head. Like super simple, super fast, crazy durable, momentum, platform, swimmy goodness. So that's the mini death grip. Check it out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next week.